little update for you guys. Still a matchup going on here. D Dog just took out Congor. Okay, Sync put up no resistance. And uh, it looks like they're going to be looking to take another serious objective soon. Pretty crazy stuff. All right, we finally are underway here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of New Earth, welcome to the stream. We do have our DreamHack Groupie Stages match number one. On the Legion side, Bad Monkey Gaming, the fifth team to qualify for this event in the NAEU qualifiers against Reason Gaming team number four. Four? I think they were fourth, maybe third. I can't remember between complexity and that. But either way, uh, both of these teams well-deserved earned their way into this tournament. And this is going to be one hell of a match up here. We're going to already take a look at the banning because they're getting right into it. And uh, this was definitely pre-planned. Parasite, Warbeast, Ophelia, and Ravener. So very interesting ban, at least on the Ravener. I mean, it was common to see now play it, but uh, as ter in terms of BMG running that as a popular hero. I'm, I haven't seen it very often. That being said, one of the bigger things that just happened is that first pick on to Moira. Fuzin, an incredible Moira player. And uh, we'll see if Reason Gaming is careful in their selection. Now, they don't get the Midas, um, which is what I really thought would have been the second pick here. Instead, they opt for Maraxis. Um, still plenty of other good heroes on the, on the table here. They do swing, and BMG going to grab Magmus as their second pick. So, pretty good stunner initiator, good follow-up, and uh, pretty good synergy between Moira's Arcane Vortex and the Magmus Eruption. You see, casting the Arcane Vortex, buying time for the counter initiation here, which is going to be key. I will say that uh, Donghua, if that is own me, and I imagine it is, I don't know if they made any last-minute team substitutions, but he has been on fire with Maraxis lately. He's likely going to get swapped that hero, and uh, definitely Andromeda. meriting the first pick there. Um, another pick that doesn't surprise me, Andromeda is probably Nier's favorite support of choice as of late. If you can't get his hands on Moira, he's one hell of an Andromeda player, able to utilize that swap mechanic and most of the time still managed to escape, which is not uh, something I can say about all of the uh, Andromeda players. So we're going to move on. Balthazar, or huh, Fusen's going to draft a Madman on the Balthazar player slot. But uh, most likely we're going to see that in the hands of Make. It's a popular suicide hero for him. And uh, I imagine that's going to be the role he plays in this game. With Ruta Z playing that secondary support, Magnus. So we still get to see a carry for Balthazar or a, uh, a mid laner for Boxy, but there's plenty of options available. And uh, it seems like they're going to play this pick by pick and see where the bands leave us off in the next spot. Neither team selecting out a jungler. You can see that most of the popular ones have been banned out. There's still a Tempest, Lego, uh, yeah, well, basically Tempest, Lego, and maybe a Solstice for it. But there we go. We're going to see Reason Gaming pick up the Legionnaire. I love the pick. The hero is is extremely powerful in the current meta and with Maraxis initiations Legionnaire follow-up taunts are just gonna be huge and that's already a huge amount of lockdown um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a ban on behemoth honestly because that's another hero that they could mix it up and and run with but I, we're gonna leave it up to the bands and see um, Fuzin's going to first ban out Puppet Master, Imba Boy banning Tramble, so it does look like they're mainly focusing on these carry bans and what they don't want to see, but remember, Flux still on the table, um, as well as Clanks, two heroes that could synergize well with either of these teams. And I will also note that I don't know if they're going to bust it out here, but Boxy's been playing a lot of hook heroes, Prisoner, Gauntlet, Devour, we've seen all three in scrims leading up to the DreamHack uh, tournament here, so... 
I wouldn't put it past them to see a pretty much outlandish pick here, but these being two NAEU teams, they may not be busting out the crazy strats just yet. After this, we do have more uh, group stages. There's going to be a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket. And uh, after that, all that leading up into the playoffs, in which four teams will eventually battle it out for that grand final slot. So if they have some tricks up their sleeve, you can be sure that they're not going to bust it out on the first game here. Probably see more conventional conven uh, conventional picks and uh, comfort heroes coming out here, which is what we see so far with the Maraxis Andro. Um, haven't seen Tankafet play Legionnaire very often. I know what you got plays the hero extremely well, and he's been successful lately with it. But uh, Tankafet, just an all-around strong jungler. He seems to know how to very well balance <clears throat> um, farming, but also being aggressive, rotating into the lanes at opportunistic moments. So, yeah, like pointed out in chat there, the respect ban on Corrupted Disciple by Fuzin, for sure. Um, I definitely would complement their strategy of having a more tanky team and and uh, so far, no real substantial damage heroes coming out. I mean, Legion seems kind of has a, a decent balance so far, physical and magical, but that kind of seals the deal now. That's a lot of magical damage coming out. You're going to want to see heroes on the Hellborn side that synergize with Shrunken Heads. I think that's going to be a key item pickup in this game if they decide to take it past the 25-30 minute mark. Um, already looking like a really strong item choice against this draft. Now, that being said, Ugi is a very powerful carry in the hands of Balthazar, and uh, we've seen him quite a bit already. He was picked up by Druids in the first game, I believe. Yeah, and, and he was pretty much unstoppable. Uh, but this is a whole... This is a whole nother beast. Reason Gaming versus BMG, so... Not going to be any free 20k gold advantage of 10 minutes in this game. We do see the Clanks pick up, and... Uh, I'm bang. I'm calling it right now. It, they're gonna round that out with a flux, and I would be ecstatic about that draft. We do see Fusin finishing off the draft with engineer. So actually, we're gonna see a suicide Magmus and a secondary support engineer. Um, well, actually, no. We we may see a dual lane mid even. Uh, it's hard to say at this point, but there goes the lodestone follow up. So once again, keeping it tanky with another hero, I. I'm not sure how that's going to pan out, but for landing's sake, the Lodestone is a better pick for them. Um, not to mention, he just completely strips away all the armor. Now you have three very powerful PK initiators, a huge a huge negative armor presence, uh, just synergizing with, between three heroes here, not to mention you add in the Bulwark, stuff like that. It's going to help Clank's transition because he is a heavily magic damage based carry. Um, until he, unless he itemizes otherwise, you know, but with the Thunderclaw, the Lackey ability, and even his ultimate, all pretty much consisting of magic damage. Um, but with all of this physical, negative physical armor off, he's still going to be able to have an impact on top of the Shrunken Head. So I think that's the strategy that Reason Gaming was going for here. And then anyway, look at uh, BMG. Decent synergy between the AoE alts of Magmus, Moira, and Engineer. Um, Rudizy is a hero, or is a player, that tends to find farm in that secondary support position, so one way or another, we usually see Balthazar in the safe lane, then he'll leave and open up the lane for Rudizy to go farming, but never seen him do it with an engineer, so, uh, I mean, this could be, this could end up being a tri-lane, even, uh, but I'm not gonna really speculate on the lanes too much, because it could change it at a moment's notice, and, uh, yeah. Alright, that was a very brief pause. I am very... We are fortunate that we are going to get this game underway right away. Thanks for the update, Mua Mua, and Sync holding high ground in the other game after a third attempt of D-Dog forcing it. Yeah, it's... If anything, Sync is going to be good at defending the high ground when they're at a disadvantage. They're going to know how to how to take, a, take advantage of an over-aggressive forcing of the team. But then again, D-Dog has 
decent late game potential. So I don't, I don't know. It's gonna have to be down to that. But enough about that game. This game is far more important in my eyes. And we already see Boxy rushing up here to get this war down. But unfortunately, he's gonna be walking right into the a nightmare. He's used all his mana. He doesn't have anything for for a stock left. Here comes the Quake Stun, Lodestone, and the early Bloodlust kill going to Reason Gaming. Credit to Imbaboy, and Clank's gonna start out with a record-breaking... Where's that GPM? It's gonna be like 1600 GPM or some crazy. Crazy number. And not to mention, everybody was there, so all that assist gold, the experience split up among them. At least he got the board down? I mean, Boxy... It, it's so crazy. I didn't imagine them putting Boxy in the suicide role. I thought they were going to put Make there. But they are running that dual lane, Engineer Magmus, which is a double stun combo. Um, Keg stun, very easy to land following up a Lava Surge. So, and I'm not sure if Arcane Shield will block a Keg stun. I'm 99% sure that it doesn't. So, even... Uh, Donghua going to have his work cut out for him in that middle lane. But Tank Effect, never far away. Always able to support his ally in the middle lane. Think he should be all right. We're going to take a look at the bottom lane here, too. It's going to be Lodestone. He's hiding that ward of sight. So there is no Revelation ward down here anyway. So he kind of would have been safe with it. But here comes Moira with Oogie in the bottom lane. We'll see how Lodestone got it. He's got pulled a little bit of regen, and he's got an iron buckler. So with those, uh, once he gets level two in those lodestone plates, he's probably going to be able to stand up, stand his ground in the lane here. Now this is interesting because I haven't seen Boxy play in the suicide role on Madman. I'm wondering how he's going to fare. He's already going to eat a common stun and some bang damage coming out. The stock is on cooldown for five seconds, but he's putting in a decent amount of damage on Ember Boy. So it looks like he is going to fare. Decent. Andromeda now just going to notice that the pull camp was blocked, if you didn't notice before, Kegstun connecting onto Maraxxus. But look at the positioning Lodestone has here. He is pretty fearless. He's going to eat a Shards of Harkon. But uh, Balthazar is that type of hero who will, will be more focused on last hitting the creeps than harassing. That's just kind of how the playstyle comes down to it. So I think Zane's going to have a fairly decent time down here. We already see Legionnaire. He put one point into Taunt, so likely going to see him roaming right now. If not right now, very early. Lodestone down here at the bottom lane, already level 3. Uh, I guess Boxy's doing just as well, but I think his days are numbered up in this top lane. Now that Lego's in the area, he's going to have to be very, very careful. If not, he will die again in this lane. Lodestone putting out that head smash onto Fuzin, doing serious damage. He's going to break the health potion, too. Moira's kind of putting herself in a bad position. Hasted Engineer, though, comes to join the party. And, oh, the Zane does get a kill onto Fuzin. Likely going to die unless he can fall to neutrals. And a beautiful timed keg stun, though, will give credit to Z for the kill there. And a decent start and a good roam there by Engineer. But also, at the same time, Suicide Zane able to pick off Fuzin. Uh, that's pretty huge. It's not very often that we see that. Lava Surge on to Maraxxus here as Engineer rotates in the middle lane. He doesn't have any mana, and Andromeda's coming to save and assist. One more auto attack will do the trick. Can he get the pick off on to Maraxxus? He wanted to dive of the tower, but now he's going to get body blocked off by Andromeda. Axe is throwing, but it does not connect. Ooh, Lava Surge on to Andromeda too, but it does, he, he was hoping for a double stun, and they didn't get it. Maraxxus had that bottle delivered. They didn't anticipate it. Maki's going to fall here due to excessive greed and it's really back and forth um, but it definitely would say that reason comes out on top here you can see Madman gonna stock in here to put a little bit more harassment onto Clanks. Clanks playing cautious he actually picks up red boots already uh, in the because Madman's playing so aggressively but yeah but I guess I shouldn't say that. Boxy has been known to play a, you know, suicide role back in the day. He used to play a lot of Kinesis and other raids. So I guess that was my bad for not respecting that. But so he is doing fairly well in here, and and it's a Make in mid. So take another peek down here. Let's just compare the farm. Imba boy, because of that bloodlust kill, slightly advantaged over Balthazar, about 50 GPM differential. But overall, in all. 
Uh, they're pretty close. 24-11, 18-8. So, yeah, Balthazar are doing a little bit better, but... Zane having a decent time because of the focus on the creep kills. They do manage uh, to scare off Madman for the time being. He picked up red boots, so instead of a bottle, he's going for that, that boot build. And he does have this ward here still. He's about to stock in, and Legionnaire's definitely got to be careful. Uh, he's low enough where a stock barrel roll might do the trick. They do had they had a revelation ward in the area, but it does seem to have expired. <laughs> Back to middle lane. Maraxxus throwing out a Quake Stun. Doesn't connect with Magmus, actually, so... It looks like he's trying to get a bit of harassment out. Here comes Lodestone, though. He's getting collapsed on by Oogie Engineer Moira. And uh, another good rotation by Ruta Z, getting credit for the kill. So he may very well find some farm in this game. Um, he picks up a bottle early on. I'm not sure if he's fearing that. Yeah, he is holding that for Make, but... Uh, either way, he's already sitting at 8180 GPM for that that really that support role. It's it's pretty good. Maki doing a good job using discipline, not even using that volcanic touch to assist in his farming. And he's already 29 and 6 against a 19 0 Maraxis, given it was a two versus one lane. But Maki is doing a hell of a job farming these creeps. Up top here, maybe look to set something up as Engineer rotates with a Veiled Rai. He has been so active this game that they really they can call him missing, but you never know where he's going to be. Uh-oh, here comes Legionnaire rotating. He has Dust. He's going to catch them both out here. He gets the taunt off on a Madman. The Bang Stun coming out. Burst damage. It is enough to get the kill. Clanks may end up falling here as Moira rotates top of the Ephemeral Forge Shards of Harkon getting the stun off here. But here comes the turn onto Engineer. He's sipping that bottle, trying to put a bit of space between him. Keg stun in one second. Will he land it? And there you go. Legionnaire's wise to his strategy and dodges it. Can he get vision to get the charge off? Magmus in the area. He's going to block him off with that Lava Search stun out. And Legionnaire's in a, a bit of a pickle, but here comes Omi. Throwing out the hatchet. Axes trying to get down. He's going to commit to Engineer. Common stun going out onto Magmus. Keg stun's going to disconnect more axes. And Ruta Z on top of his game here today. He just managed to dodge a four man gank and assist a kill onto Clanks. So that's something to be said about that. I was worried about him finding farm. A lot of times he, he suffers early game. Uh, until Balthazar opens up that bot lane for him, but yeah, absolutely having a good good time so far, and uh, it's debatable whether that was a failed dust gank, because they lost the Madman, but they slowed down the clanks a little bit, and uh, just further closing the gap between Balthazar and Emba Boy. Uh, we do have a brief pause here, but the game is already underway. Respecting BMG, definitely focused in this game, and uh, it's showing here how dedicated these teams are to winning this, this this LAN event. You could tell that if one of these teams won it, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it could be both of these teams making it into the playoffs. A little barrel roll damage coming out on him, boy. Taking a little bit of unnecessary tower damage, but here comes Legionnaire roaming into the bottom lane. Lodestone activating that ultimate. The Shatterstorm does connect on Oogie. He's getting huge damage, and the decapitate comes off. So what a rotation there by Tank Effet. And they drop Balthazar, who's left all by himself. I mean, Moira has kind of been all over the place. Hasn't had as much of an impact as Ruta Z, but her, I mean, her presence was required at top. But you got to be careful leaving him alone, because... Reason Gaming is going to punish you every time you give him the opportunity. Yeah, well, Make deciding to get Volcanic Touch over Steam Bath, I agree. He definitely should have had one point in at this point. Um, but maybe he's planning on rotating into the jungle at one point, opening up the mid lane for... For Boxy to farm, or something like that. I'm sure Maki has some kind of strategy going on. But, yeah, Marax is taunting him with that uh, animation cancel. Here comes Sound Bottom. He's now rotating into the jungle. So we will see somebody likely taking over that bottom lane. But Lodestone, he does manage to pick up an invisibility rune. 25 seconds left on the cooldown of Shatterstorm. And that's a low HP Magmus. That's a dead Magmus if he is not careful here. Okay, Engineer and Moira may be spotting him out. Oh, he throws out the Q, but he doesn't connect. And Magnus with the Lava Surge follow-up. Can he get the Q off in time? No. 
Zane getting a little bit greedy there, and he ends up falling as a result, so. Good job of Rudy Z spotting him out, and once again, another beautiful keg stun. I guess you could say it's easy following up the Lava Surge, but at the same time, I mean, the timing was impeccable, and that's one thing Rudy Z is phenomenal with. We see him with those Behemoth Fishers in past games, following up the Arcane Vortex, stuff like that. A lot of respect going out for him this game. But at the same time, Imba Boy sticking to his guns. Uh, once again, Baldor still hot on his tail, even with that death. It is really close here. The golden experience advantage, very, very minimal in favor of Reason Gaming. Here comes Magnus, Rudy King, with a veiled rot. Huge burst damage coming out onto Clanks. He's channeling that eruption. Andromeda not level 6, unable to assist her teammate there. And uh, a successful roam here by Make, setting up some teamwork with Boxy. So, Imba Boy down again for another 30 seconds. We're going to see Oogie transitioning to the jungle, and this is where Oogie's going to start to pull ahead. They did delay the uh, Thunderclaw. I don't know if he's got it in, a, in, a, in the base, or at least... I mean, he must at least have the Warp Cleft by now. But this is around the time that Clank should be rotating in the jungle, opening up that top lane uh, for whoever needs the experience of gold, whatever they decide to do. We're going to get this double stack turned into a triple stack. And uh, definitely Oogie's already in a position to take that. So setting up the path for uh, success is Fuzan. Definitely planning for the future. We do see Oogie is going to be rushing that Icon of the Goddess. I don't think there's a better item for the way this hero works. So even though Balthazar is probably going to be more passive and not involved, if he does have to TP gank, uh, the Icon is definitely going to prove useful. Ooh, another pause here coming out, actually, so... Another quick break, but let's take a look at the, uh... Itemization... Striders. Um... Hey, Kenadorf, thanks for the shout-out, man. I appreciate that. So, yeah, the Warp Cleft was picked up, so we're gonna see the Thunderclaw very soon. Uh, you know, Imbiboy extremely good at recovering. He's already working on the triple stack here. That'll take care of that. Dongwa, aka Onmi... Not having the best farm, but still almost 300 GPM for the amount of times he's he's had rotations. And up against two people, he's doing pretty damn good. And uh, we we'll, should see a portal key in the works probably in the next five minutes or so. Engineer 2, saving, uh, I mean a Legionnaire, saving up as well. 900 gold in the bank. Got a Veiled Rot, so I'm going to keep an eye on him. They might be looking to set something up on Oogie here once again. He's a little bit tankier than the last time they tried this, but another Shatterstorm, and okay, Oogie's going to TP out of here. Where is he going? He's going to transition into the middle lane. Something tipped him off that uh, it was it was not safe to be here anymore. So unfortunately, Tank Effect going to be wasting a bit of his time here. Maybe he can pick off a Moira? Um, okay, Oogie's transitioning for this triple stack ancient, so that's just going to keep on snowballing here. Ember Boy getting that Thunderclaw delivered. Do they have any stacks set up for him? Unfortunately, that's not the case. Try to set up a gang on Magmus, and I really hope that Andromeda can hit six soon. Uh, they already showed how easily Ember Boy can be killed uh, on that Clank's hero. One Veiled Rot stun for Magmus. Here comes bottom lane initiation onto Moira. Gets a Shadow Storm in the head bunk. Head smash, and that is a dead Moira. In the meantime, here comes Moraxis going in on Engineer. He's got to be careful, though. Engineer's level 7. He's got plenty of mana for a keg and an energy field. And, uh, yeah, Oogie finishing that icon of the goddess. So let's see what he decides to do. Even Madman wants to get a piece of this jungle. He's going to try to stack it up for his teammates. So BMG definitely prepping the farm game a little bit better than uh, Reason at this point, but Reason's still hanging in there. The gold deficit, pretty much non-existent. Apologize for the camera bunk there. Oh, Andrew's going to take a little bit of damage from Madman. Nobody's in the area for her to swap, and she didn't have enough vision to get the stun off. So that's a dead near, unfortunately. And a boxy taking a free kill where you can get it. They are going to spot Oogie rotating in this lane. And many people in the area. Lodestone's going to have to be careful. He, or, did he activate Primal Surge? He did. So he's trying to man up here as Madman's got that Veiled Rot skeeting on. If there was a ward, he's perfectly 
in position to set something up. Here comes the Ephemeral Forge being channeled. Lodestone sets that something is wrong. He's going to back up. The Forge is cancelled. So, uh, good reaction time there by Zane and uh, forcing out the bad waste of a Veiled Rot and a two-player rotation in the bottom lane. So Maraxxus manages to bottle up a double damage rune. He's now halfway to that portal key, and that's where we really... Uh, I mean, we see these portal keys coming out. Okay, and that was... A Mighty Blade just picked up by Ember Boy. So he's definitely prioritizing survivability early, and I can't, I can't deny that from him. I can't say it's a... It's a bad idea, because it's just... Every all five heroes here is pure magic damage. You can see Maraxis grabbing the vestments, preparing for the onslaught of burst damage that's going to be coming out. Take a look at the hero damage so far. No surprise. Zane on top of his team just landing those huge shatter storms um, with the head smash, and Engineer leading his team. So at that going now, Imba Boy falls under Balthazar for the first time this game. Um, he did just pick up the Thunderclaw, but he's choosing to stay in the lane. It looks like Legionnaire is still maintaining a, a hold on that jungle. So the gold, the, the main difference here is the gold's being split up much more on the reason side than uh, BMG, where they're just focusing on Balthasar and Make finishing that portal key, which he has, worth noting. So we've seen in the past uh, scrims that Boxe and Make like to group up when he gets that portal key and make, sh ha make stuff happen. So, uh, I have to see. They're spending a lot of time down here, bottom lane. Uh, I th they, they're anticipating a gank on Oogie, but Reason Game is not taking the bait. I'm not even sure if they're going to defend this tower. Worst case scenario is that they lose their Ancients, so... Hopefully they, they do decide to defend that. If that's the case, Charizard Hargan activated on Oogie. Gonna burst down this wave, and the first tower falls... Uh, for re for BMG, blah. Clank's gonna rotate over here. He's continually pushing up the lane himself, and yeah, TP's coming out up here. Do they have a veiled right? Oh, PK stunned uh, by Magmus. Woof, Emba boy, cutting it close there. If he got that stun off, there likely would have been a follow up and potentially a very dangerous Andrew swap interrupts the Myra TP. And yeah, he's going to be in trouble here. Shards of Harkon do connect on the Lodestone, but they double stun. They don't even need to stagger them because that's too much damage for Fuzin to take. He will fall down here. He gets a ward off in the meantime before falling, but a fairly nice pickoff and a good spot by Nier. That's a waste of eh, 135 gold on top of the death. Lava Surge channeled onto Clanks. Clanks is going to die. And Make hitting level 12 very early. His experience per minute is just freaking huge this game. And uh, going to show that Clanks is making the right decision and focusing on that shrunken head first. Uh, because he is kind of that that all-in strategy. But here comes the portal key onto Maraxxus. Uh, Legionnaire as well. So this is the point where Reason Gaming is going to be able to make an impact here. Yeah, I apologize for that, Rainy, if I offended you. Trying to keep it clean here. These teams, this game, this matchup just gets me really excited. Andromeda picks up a haste rune, and she's going to get a nice ward of sight down here. It's going to spot out Moira. Oogie, kind of low on HP and mana, so I don't really think... If he picks a fight here, they're going to have a considerable advantage. There's not going to be a huge rotation able to come out from Oogie, and the Primal Surge is on cooldown. Lodestone, though. Looks like Madman and Moira are going to be looking to set something up here, but I don't think they're going to be able to get the kill on Lodestone. He's got a portal key of his own. One, two, three portal keys picked up. And here goes Legionnaire with the Veiled Rod. It's going to get the taunt off onto Engineer. He's getting a couple of spin procs, but not too many. Headbone coming out. Engineer falls down. Magnus. Lava Surge is going to come in and catch Lodestone. Rex Quake Stones onto nothing, activating the Mat Tracks, but Lodestone's going to get cat in the summon the Arcane Vortex. You know, the Shadow Storm explodes, but it doesn't connect on anybody. Now he's got to be careful. He's very vulnerable. He's going to TP out in the background. Lava Surge connecting onto Maraxxus as Oogie's taking huge damage. Clanks in the background just really unloading, and that Thunderclaw proc is doing work. Can he get the finishing hit off? No. Oogie Primal Surge comes off cooldown just in time and does so much work to turn the fight in their favor. And a hat trick for Balthazar. Oh, if, if one more proc came off on Balthazar, that fight would have went completely different. But BMG ultimately taking the fight.
They they only lose one hero and they trade for four. Huge disparity in the golden experience because of that team fight. And uh, I gotta say, Onmi missing that quake stun and his match tracks not doing much was pretty big. A big blunder for Reason Gaming. That Arcane Vortex also splitting up the fight quite a bit uh, may have had an impact. So that being said, the first big team fight is going to come out here with BMG on top. I wouldn't count either team out at this point. Uh, the team fight potential, though, you got to think, what are they going to focus on here? The Oogie is definitely an issue. He needs to be focused, but what are the charges? He's already stacked up eight charges on the Icon of the Goddess, and really, that's exactly what he wants. It's definitely utilizing and showing that the item choice was a good idea. Now we're going to see a tablet onto Magmus. Uh, this is going to assist in dodging, you know, the Shatterstorm, assisting teammates from getting out of that that Andro swap, uh, a Legionnaire taunt. It's a very good item pickup this game, uh, and I'm I'm definitely a fan of it. Looks like Madman's working on an Energizer, so just uh, further the chase potential. Oogie doesn't have the best escape mechanism, so increased movement speed. It's going to help him to be kited, or you know, prevent him from being kited. So that's pretty good. Item in general for the team fight presence. Nothing for Moira and maybe a portal key in the works for Ruta Z. He could go with the tablet route too, but I think the energy field is going to be pretty crucial in this matchup. It's going to be a while before we see shrunken heads onto the rest of the team. Eventually it will be, but if he can get some really early good energy fields off, uh, it's going to be pivotal in turning the tides of these team fights. So, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the build, but you can't complain with Root Disease results. I feel like you only need one point into that steam turret. Uh, and mines are very powerful nowadays. Mine trap's not bad, but... Either way, he's doing a great job. So, Marax is activating that Veiled Rot. This is where he really shines. He needs to find a nice target to pick off and not essentially a team fight. With all these portal keys, his team could collapse in a matter of seconds. Nope. Oh. Our Femoral Forge being channeled here by Moira. Clanks is going to back off. He's getting pretty nervous as he eats the shards of Harkon. But really, it's just bait. There's nobody in the area. This Ward of Sight from near is kind of giving Maraxxus an, an idea of that no, there's nobody you know, in the area. Here comes Quakesun on to Moira with the match tracks. Okay, but there's huge amounts of TPs coming in here. Lava Surge going to connect on to Maraxxus, and he's already blew a lot of his cooldowns, so he's in a bit of trouble. He activates the Arcane Shield, but the damage is done. That is not a fair trade. Uh, BMG with those TP reaction was so quick. Even though that he picked off, he picked off Moira in a split second. It just, it didn't pay off in the end. At the same time, they all TP in. They don't get anything but the kill on Demaraxis. So, Lodestone's gonna remain farming as well as Clanks. Did Oogie come to the rescue there? Yeah, I think he poured it in mid. All four players did. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Maki is going to deny the mid tower after all. He's going to bottle up a rune here, or at least pick it up. It's a haste rune. So, we'll see if he look, if he goes on the prowl for anything. He's got a PK mag in the area. I mean, this could be a... It could be, he could easily focus the Andromeda, but he's going to play it safe, make his way and stack up the Ancients and take him out. The gold lead, yeah, it's still pretty big in favor of BMG, and Balthazar is really starting to snowball here. Um, already working on a Blessed Orb. That's probably going to be a, fr a Frost Wolf Skull, I want to say, because just bulking up is probably your best bet on him, but it could be it could be a number of items at this point. Maybe even a Sheep Stick. I don't know. I think the Frost Wolf is probably where he's going with it, though. It's, it's not very often you'll see the Blessed Orb picked up first. Just that slowing factor prevents him from being kited. So, it looks like they're going to be trying to take these Ancients as a team, but no. Veiled Rot activated by Legionnaire, so he at least going to be active. Nearest Ward of Spite's going to spot out Oogie here. Will they get this pick off? Because this will be huge. Lodestone in the area. Okay, this is very risky for Oogie. He's going to get spotted out. Here comes the Taunt. The follow-up, and the PKs are in sync. 
Ephemeral Forge, though, getting it collapsing in the Arcane Vortex, almost saves Balthazar, but he's gonna fall. But rest of the rest of BMG rotating into the area. No, it's just Moira. What's going on in the background here? Magnus and Legionnaire facing off as Maraxis activates the Matrax. Ultimately, a very nice pickoff, taking off some of those charges on Balthazar, knocking him down to five Icon of the Goddess, and they may transition into an objective here and take the bottom tower. Yeah, there's no guarantee that that's owned me, but I'm pretty sure it is. The fact that he was swapped Maraxis pretty much seals the deal for me. Engineer getting in a sneaky little position here. He does have a portal key now, so that's big. I'm glad that he did decide to go that route, and uh, positioning is going to be crucial in these team fights. The A good energy field is going to disrupt a lot of this, uh, a lot of these portal key initiations, so... And I'm pretty sure that has to be one of the core reasons that they chose Engineer. Um, aside from the fact that he had an incredible impact in the landing phase of the game, yeah. That little, that little uh, gank out of Ogi slightly switches the gold back uh, down about halfway from 3k to 1500. They're going to make their way into the Ancients, take that out. So the advantage is pretty much gone now, and it's back to dead even. Um... Make almost level 16, so that eruption, you know, gonna be massive with the shrunken head still not picked up yet. Clanks manages to complete his. Oh, Another item, Zane's gonna deny top tower. And uh, look at it once again. We see another Veiled Rot picked up onto the Legionnaire, so, I mean, this is what you do when you rush early portal keys. You make it worth your while, you buy time for Clanks, and uh, I'm not sure if it's the best idea. I mean, but Reason even seems like they're confident in taking this to the later stages. Ugi in mid lane with the backup of Boxy, and he has had a full team behind him, so probably a best decision here by BMG to, or Reason Gaming to fall back, not overcommit, as they're kind of split up at the moment. Um, but another thing that this Portal Key Engineer does is it allows them to get that first initiation, and a, and a lot of times with Magnus, if he's the core initiator, okay, Madman's going to get spotted out by the Aurora here, and they have to know that BMG's in the area. They're going to knock out the Ephemeral Forge. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, Magnus, as a core initiator, he kind of struggles unless you rush a shrunken head. It's very hard to initiate and then get off a, a nice eruption. If you put Engineer on the front lines at the other time, they collapse on the Engineer. He follows up in the background. And it just, he has a huge imp, he has a much larger impact on the game. We could see already, I mean, he's pretty much even with Balthazar, who's putting out massive amounts of AoE damage, so it's working for them so far. So, wow, Madman here is getting really ballsy. Legionnaire's going to... Oh, he does not connect with the taunt. The dust, though, is going to connect out onto him. Madman's going to do some serious juking to get himself out of this mess. But no, the decapitate connects. Madman's going to fall. Boxy way out of position. There's no vision in the jungle here. I have no idea what he was doing. It's a, a very questionable play. And maybe a little a little restless. I mean, normally we'll see Boxy and Make running, running, uh, running amok with the portal keys, but... Agmus just kind of focusing on farm. His next item is probably going to be either a shrunken head, which which might be a good idea, or I could see him grabbing a sheep stick as well. But no, so he Balthazar is actually building a sheep stick. Um, we just saw him pick up the mana tube, so it's not going to be a frost wolf skull. Uh, I guess that's in terms of just collapsing on the clanks and shutting him down, but. I don't think the Sheepstick's going to be the best item in this game. I think the longer Oogie survives, the bigger his impact is, so... Yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of the item choice, but we'll have to see how it pans out. Engineer is... Setting up a spider mine here. I'm not... I don't know what that's going to do, but... Maybe if they engage and Clanks tries to escape through the trees... It's a little... It's a, if that manages to hit somebody... I will be amazed. So Mag did use ulti. I thought he was animation canceling it. I saw that too. Pretty funny. 
Balthazar, 540 GPM. Clank's trying to keep up with him, but it's just hard. He's just annihilating these triple stacks. And, uh... Yeah, even Magma's doing really well. He grabs a Storm Spirit. Uh... Ultimately, a really good item. I mean, he's going for that utility roll. Once again, though, I'm... I'm I'm kind of confused by the itemization here by BMG. I think they could be using this gold for for better because of the the impact their their heroes have already with their skill sets. But uh, we'll see. Maybe some huge storm spirit will make me eat my words. On the other hand, barbed armor picked up on the lodestone. I'm I'm fully behind that. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty useful. Okay, here goes Madman Box. You got to be careful again. He did walk by. Fuzin's Revelation Ward, so he didn't get revealed. He's got that invisibility rune in place, but if they have the dusty barrel rolls here, what is he doing? A Magnus instant eruption. Okay, here comes the lava surge, guaranteed any second out. Madman's gonna get bursted down, but the energy field comes out collapsing it. Lex has that shrunken head activated. Arcane Vortex coming out way too late. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Andrew's gonna swap engineer back in, and Ibba Boy getting a quad kill there. I apologize, that fight broke out so fast, I was a little bit caught off guard, but... I mean, you just seen what happened, basically, they collapsed on the Madman, who put himself in a really bad position. Energy field onto the Clanks, who already had a shrunken head activated. And a really late Arcane Vortex is going to spell a genocide. Gold for buybacks on Fuzin, Balthazar, and Boxy. And I think they have to buy back here. They're gonna try to buy as much time, but definitely buyback's gonna come on Balthazar. I think once the rest of the team respawns. They're going to look to push the barracks already. Arcane Vortex on cooldown. Here comes the buyback by Balthazar. And a Hellborn team is going to fall back. That They'll take that as a victory. And just like that, Imbo Boy takes a lead. That quad kill doing work for his stats. Uh, chat in the uproar. This is twice Boxy's put himself in a really vulnerable position. I understand the idea of baiting. Um, but it's not like he has a shrunken head. So, and and it just seems like they they weren't fully committed. They came kind of came in one at a time. And, and they even, it was a good timing though. I mean, Boxy had the idea because Maraxxus was really low on mana. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, a full committed team fight for Reason Gaming. But it ultimately come out on top because Clank's sitting in the background unloading. Andromeda at the same time. Every once in a while, you are going to get caught out. Eats the Tarquake. Credit for the kill. Smackdown for Balthazar. Um, but, it's, yeah, Reason Gaming taking the gold advantage for the first time in this game after that fight. And uh, with good reason. I mean, well executed. I like the itemization here by Imba Boy. Um, the Firebrand for that attack speed. Turning into the Geometer's Bane for sieging the base. Um... The wing bow to give him that additional range, I think it's the perfect item for Clanks because he's all about just staying out of harm's way. And he doesn't have a null stone, I don't think it's required. So it's going to be about positioning and the wing bow assists in positioning. Well, let's keep an eye on Boxy, see if he des decides to kind of step it up and, and stay on the right side of the map. Uh, let's take a look at the warding here going on. Fusin somehow got these extremely aggressive wards up, and it's it's interesting because a lot of the fights have been taking place on the other side of the map. So these wards say we want to get aggressive, but their positioning, map positioning, says otherwise. Yeah, and Boxy, now that I think about it, he had the invisibility rune too. So by no means was he was that a forced uh, initiation. Oh, jeez, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's very questionable, but both teams kind of step back here. We got the Shrunken Head complete on Legionnaire, and it's a very rare item pickup for him in general, but with the Oogie in the Energizer field and the the, the huge Magma Souls we've seen this game, it's a good item pickup, and uh, I'm surprised Maraxxus didn't prioritize it as well. But at the same time, that Hellflower is definitely going to be useful. No Shrunken Head or Null Stone onto Oogie, so if they could get a Hellflower initiation off onto him, um, pretty, pretty good chance. From a 
Forge being channeled down here. They're going to scout out Conger as it is uh, now respawned. And yeah, they're just biding their time. I mean, the wing boat now complete on Imba Boy. Uh, he's got... He's pretty close to buy back gold. Yeah, he just hits it right now. Given a death will take him down a bit, but... I mean, he's got the items that he really needs to do damage. In fact, the entire Hellborn team, aside from Rax's waiting on finishing that Hellflower, they all have the core items that they need to really... take a team fight, and... Then this is what it is. They're gonna do Congor, and that's the setup for them to finish out a Rax. I think late game with different items, Legion team has a little bit of an advantage because Oogie is just so powerful. But right now, I think Reason has the team fight potential, and uh, they should look to use that. So they're kind of baiting out Congor using the Max Maxis Illusions to scout out and uh, an Availed Ride active on Legionnaire. But here's the Andromeda Sun onto the Moira Illusion. Uh, games are won and lost in the Congor pit. BMG very good at uh, lately winning fights in the Congor pit, so they're being extra careful, but this is going to be it. They're not in a position to defend it, so this is likely going to be a token onto the clanks. It's taking him. Yeah, he's out of the pit. You're missing clanks. Let him back in the Congor pit. And that cost them dearly. That would have been a dead Congor by now, but instead they're going to have to fall back and BMG's in positioning. Oh, so that was really unfortunate. Whoever pulled that Congor out of the pit needs to be fired. Using the bang to scout out Mars Illusion once again. Congor... The pit. And uh, they are ready, but Madman's stalking so much, he's already used a lot of his mana. You see the cost 110, 110, and 60, so 220, 280. He doesn't even have enough for all three now. He doesn't even have enough to stock barrel roll on top of a Berserker. And uh, questionable plays here. Hellborn team is ready. I mean, they're all mana up. They're All their cooldowns are ready. They're veiled up. I mean, they're looking for a fight. They're baiting this Congor, and even these... Engineer Mines, well placed by Ruta Z to perhaps interrupt a, a, T, uh, a portal key gank or initiation. Those could definitely cause a ruckus. Nears Ward of Sight is going to spot him out placing those, though. Congor is going to do him a favor eat up one of those spider mines. But yeah, it's funny. Both teams completely neglecting the rest of the map and uh, not focusing on farm. It's kind of a little bit of a stalemate here. Congor just ate the other mine too. So Congor definitely on Hellborn team side. Clank's gonna try to put a little first damage. Quake Sun coming out on a Congor. They're trying to lock him down. But once again, here we go. He's gonna cut it out. No, they have to fall back. And it's funny because BMG doesn't even have vision. They have this little war to sight. And they just have the game sense. The spider mine's coming down into the pit again. Bang's gonna connect. Madman with a haste rune activated. He did fill his bottle, so he, he got mana back. Uh, both teams realizing that this Congor is important. What's more important, though, winning the team fight? Oogie, with that sheep stick, he's going to look to follow up on, on the clanks with that. I can't imagine any other target being prioritized. I imagine you could pull Congor up here and kill him. That would make for some interesting play, but uh, it's getting real here. Spider Mine Trap being set in the woods to the left, so they're going to try to bait the fight into this area. Um, we'll see if Reason Gaming is he's going to take the bait. Now, the Word of Sight did just expire for Fusen. I think he has another... Yeah, he just get another one delivered and three Revelation Wards. So he's going to try his best to de-ward this. Unfortunately, that's not in range of Nier's Ward. Strike one. There is Strike two. And he has one more chance left. We'll see. Checks. It's probably going to come out here. They do have that Andromeda Aurora giving them vision of the Legion side team. So, Madman, this is the. F They've been here for almost six minutes now. Yeah, it's boring and exciting at the same time because you never know what's going to happen. Charge the Heart Gun, connect out of these two heroes. Andromeda using the Comet Sun, so it is on cooldown. Both teams kind of messing with each other. And here comes Oogie, Madman up the hill. 
instantly Clank's gonna activate the shrunken head. They burst down Oogie. Oogie gets Storm Spirit by the Magnus, so it's gonna buy him a little bit of time, but eventually he will fall. Magnus stuns him, but now like, decapitation comes out, and Make and Boxe both fall. Engineer is gonna come in. Again, it's gonna portal key out, but that's gonna be enough. I'm pretty sure that they can force the Congor out now, no. Knowing that Balthazar does not have money for a buyback. Engineer. Yeah, he doesn't have much. He's got a keg stun. He's got vision on the Legionnaire. Oh, and he comes in with it to steal the token. He did. And Ruta Z with the token snipe. He's going to cost him his life. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a fairly decent trade off. It's going to prevent the siege a little bit. But no, here comes Maraxis. Maraxis was very smart in, in the fact that he pushed the lane off while the other teammates finished Gongor. Here comes an Ephemeral Forge being channeled by Moira, activating the shards of Harkon's gonna get absorbed by that Arcane Shield. Yeah, I just, the sheep stick onto Oogie. Oh my goodness, the Magmus in the background, he got interrupted by Maraxis, so the channel of eruption is for nothing. They end up getting both barracks. And uh, I missed that, but a huge play by Onmi, getting in there and interrupting the Magmus. That Lava Surge could have done serious damage. And I gotta go back to the itemization of this Oogie. The cheap stick has no value in this game. It's it's just not really having an impact. The cheap stick was a good item, but it doesn't suit his playstyle. And Oogie with the survivability, the longer he stays alive, the more damage he takes. Lodestone almost falling to the mine trap, but at least it is now absorbed and out of the way. This game is extremely tense right now. So Marax is finishing that Hellflower. Uh, Legionnaire, he must have... Okay, he bought Post Haste, so it's going to give him that mobility to be able to farm and still be available to come to the team fights. Clinks finishing that Geometer's Bane with another 3,000 gold in the bank. I have to hope that that becomes a Savage Mace, because the hero lacks uh, physical damage presence. And with so much negative armor coming out from this team, I think it'd be pretty well versed to get that item. Though saving for buyback at this point is the safer option. And Drummer's going to pick up a Bound Eye, and they're going to walk right into a Veil Drop Madman here. It's going to get revealed. Do they collapse on him? They decide not to chase. He's going to TP out, so... Reason Gaming playing it safe, but what was a sure pickoff on Boxy once again? He has his Brutalizer completed. He's going to... Finish that shrunken head. And look at Oogie's choice on picking up the Mystic Vestments. There's not that much magic damage coming out. Clanks, yes, but... A Mystic Vestments isn't going to save you from the onslaught of the Clanks. Oh, he's separated from the team, and here comes Madman. He's going to activate the Energizer. They'll likely collapse on him here. Yeah, Lodestone coming to him, catches him with the stun. Bang, activated. Uh oh, in the background, here comes a Magmus. Lava Surge Eruption combo onto Clanks and Lodestone. Can he get the Shrunken Head off? He does activate it. And driving to take the Dungeon. Here comes a huge Shatterstorm. Oogie teleporting right into the badness of the fight. The energy field instantly negated. And once again, the focus not on Imba Boy. And he's putting out the serious damage. 27% hero damage in this matchup. He had a double damage rune somehow. But the bottle was swapped off to him. And uh, I gotta say that this is not looking good from BMG. Reason Gaming instantly melting Foos in there. He tried to be the cannon fodder. Oogie buys back using the rest of his gold. But here comes the problem. Rax is getting a burst of damage, but the turn is too much. Reason Gaming still have all five members up. Mini GG, well played, called out. Game one goes to Reason Gaming in a stunning performance. Uh, Ruta Z was the early game MVP, but it, it just shows to show how much of an impact the Veiled Rot, PK Ganks, the relentless onslaught, this Hellborn team, and that huge fight at Congor. Um, just simply amazing. So that's going to seal it up. It's going to be one to nothing. Match two be starting here in just a short while. So once again, thanks for staying tuned, guys. We'll return very soon.